morning. And welcome to St. Andrews, an affirming and inclusive church worshiping in downtown North Bay. Um, we're so glad you're here. Thank you for taking time on this beautiful summer morning to join us. And if you're joining us later online uh, for worship, we do welcome you as well and hope that this time of worship will be a blessing to you. Uh, this Sunday starts our summer series and with that, um, we welcome our friends from Trinity United Church. Welcome folks, so lovely to see you. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the summer is worshiping together with uh, folks from down the road. So thank you so much for coming today. Um, for the little one, there are uh, coloring materials and things in the back corner. So uh, feel free, um, let, let your little one wander as, uh, at will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I, this morning we especially welcome our friend Brenda McClay. Uh, she's a licensed lay worship leader. You will probably know her better from her being in Ralph's spot on the piano event uh, where she so capably substitutes when Ralph is away. But today we're delighted to have Brenda leading us in worship, and uh, we're just so grateful, Brenda, that you're here. Thank you so much. And lest I forget, Linger Lemonade after church in the chapel. Thank you to Liz Westbrook for preparing the lemonade and providing some little sweets for us. So please feel free to stay afterwards and, and mingle and wet your whistles. We would be delighted to get to know you folks, visitors, a little better. So I'm going to turn the service over to Brenda. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you, Liz, for the introduction. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. This is a different capacity for me to be here, as mentioned. I'm I'm happy to fill in when uh, Ralph needs uh, Sunday off, um, but it's a pleasure to be here in this capacity as well. I want to take a minute just to say thank you to Ralph and to the choir for, for your musical leadership this morning, so thank you very much. As we continue, we'll acknowledge um, the traditional territory and that we gather today on the traditional territory, the Anishinaabek people, and specifically, the Nipissing First Nation, the land they share with us as a result of the robertson huron Treaty. May we live in peace and friendship as a treaty people. Please join me in the call to worship. Our thirsty souls gather at the water's edge we drink deeply from the flowing river of God. Our weary souls rest from the busy current. We rest in the quiet stillness of God's love. We long for justice and for peace. We are renewed in God's ever-flowing stream. Holy One, take our lives as you will on life's river ride. And our opening hymn, Voices, you number, Voices United, number 506, Take My Life and Let It Be, number 506.
Continue with our gathering prayer, if you would join with me together. Creator God, we gather together seeking direction, some of us empty and weary, some of us bursting with joy and energy and ideas, all of us searching, all of us listening, for the breeze to whisper your way forward a way by which we can do all that we can, wherever there is a need. We pray in the name of Jesus and in the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are assured that God is our constant companion and advocate in our journey. New doors open when we encounter obstacles and we are granted entry into new life, new mercy, and new grace. Our invitation to dwell in God's house is continually renewed. With living waters, we are refreshed. Our next hymn is in more voices. Number 144, Like a Healing Stream. Beautiful hymn by Bruce Harding. Number 144, More Voices, Like a Healing Stream. Thank you. 
Good morning. My name is David McKenney, and I'm a member at Trinity United Church, where I serve on the uh, Building and Grounds Committee, and I'm also a member of the AOTS men's group the, as one that serves. The readings today are from Galatians 6 and Luke 10. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move from that house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, Go out into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off and protest against you. Now yet, this kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one that sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to, tend to, um, to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this. This, that the Spirit submits to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. These words are offered as wisdom on our journey. Let us walk together in this truth. And the next hymn is from our More Voices, number three, The River.
That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Full gospel choir here this morning. <laughs> and thank you, Dave, for the readings. Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the passage we're exploring today is a mission story. We tend to think in terms of 12 disciples, but here we have an account of a story of 70 more, and they were sent out to bring Christ's message of peace. So let's think about those 70 individuals. All of them keen, maybe a little bit nervous, all filled with excitement, maybe even we could say an evangelical fervor. And Jesus told them to go with very little, basically, with nothing, not even footwear. Now, imagine walking on the dusty paths as they headed out. And when I read this, I thought, I wonder how long it took for somebody to offer each one of them a pair of sandals that they could wear. And this is where their individual journeys took them. And their lives took a dramatic turn the day that they agreed to go and take this message of peace ahead of, of Jesus. And, and they were to greet people with that message of peace. And if they were welcome, they were to stay with that person, spreading the ministry of Jesus, gratefully accepting whatever was offered to them in the way of food or lodging. And there was no specification that it had to be a Jewish household. In this time, the Romans were ruling uh, the land. But these people were told to go wherever the message was welcomed. And Jesus said to them, don't wander from house to house. You know, buddy down the street might have more food, might have a bigger place to stay, but that didn't matter. You were to accept and recognize the hospitality of the host that gave you sanctuary. And if they were not made to feel welcome, they were to move on. They were to flow in another direction. Jesus recognized that there were many people in spiritual, that needed spiritual nourishment and needed to, to drink deeply of the knowledge of God. These additional disciples were told to stay focused on their mission, don't get sidetracked on anything that would take away from the purpose of why you were heading out. And he didn't sugarcoat what he was asking. He said, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. You know, it's going to be a tough crowd. He sent them in twos, and likely that was for safety and companionship. But when they returned, they were, they were energized. They were overcome with joy. And they were probably bursting with all kinds of stories. We don't, we don't know what those stories were. We only know that Jesus advises them not to think too well of themselves because of the power of the message that they took and, and the healing that they were able to do, but to realize that the lives they had been living were pleasing to God. At the end of this service, I, I don't expect you know, that we will likely leave the space going in, in twos to knock on people's doors and relate to them the message of Jesus. But in this passage of scripture, there are a lot of takeaways, I think, for all of us that are here. The idea of the journey, the idea to go with the flow, to keep moving, and to take that opportunity of bringing the message of peace and the message the ministry of Jesus when we have that message welcomed. Many years ago, a friend of mine said he thought life was like a river. He said, floating down the river, you tie up at a dock, there might be other people tied up at the dock. You share some time, then they may untie and go. And then you untie and you go. And so all, down, all the way down the river we go together. And most rivers, as you know, it's easier to go downstream than upstream. Um, just because of the current or there could be hazards to navigate. So we tend, you know, we'll go with the flow. But what happens when we get hung up on the rocks? You know, sometimes that's enough for us to say, oh, I just want to quit. That's enough. 
But is it? Because a barrier is only a barrier. It's not the end of the journey down the river. And somehow there's a way to go around it, a way to go over it, maybe swim under it, maybe push off from the rocks and head back out into the stream. And it's the same with the spiritual journey that we all take, our life's ride down the river. Now Jesus didn't ask the disciples to stay where there was a barrier and try to convince people to listen. Well, he said, move on. He didn't have them focus on what they couldn't do. He had them focus on what they could do. And he said the harvest was more than there were workers available to collect it. So just keep going. We all get stuck sometimes, get bogged down, get hung up on the rocks. Maybe it's a spiritual thirst that we can't satisfy. And in ways it's easier to lament about what we cannot do. The challenge is to sort out what we can do. If we need living waters, maybe we can't be standing to receive them. Maybe we need to bend down to where the pools are to drink from them. And if it's rocks we're hung up on, maybe we actually have to get out of the boat to lighten it, lift it off the rocks, and then get back in and continue on. That's a lived experience, that one. <laughs> Sorry. So what is our individual and our collective mission on our spiritual journey? In our everyday, do we find a moment where kindness is going to make a difference? Where a greeting of peace just might open up and encourage a conversation with somebody? Sometimes we need to hang on really firm to the gunnels of the canoe and we feel vulnerable and we're praying that we don't tip. And we, and we need to find that trust that we are traveling in the direction of the flow that God would have us go and take a deep drink of living waters. And if we do capsize, have the faith that with God's grace, we know we're going to right ourselves again. And we may see somebody else tip over in their boat and we have to have the faith in what we can do in order to help them back up into their own vessel. And when we do feel excitement about our successes, Jesus reminds us to continually focus on the spiritual path, the journey, and not get hung up on rocks of accomplishment. Every twist and bend in the river is a new part of the river. It's a part for us to enjoy, to overcome challenges, to share with each other, and all with the gratitude for blessings that we receive. Last weekend, I was at a celebration of life for Cindy Desolates. And if you knew Cindy, you knew what a force of wonder she was. And Melody Duncan Hale was recounting the first week of school when she met her um, in Toronto for, to start their, their educational ministry. And Cindy showed up in a vehicle with very little and no place to stay. And, and it took her a week of sleeping in her car before she found a place to stay. And I thought that was an incredible story. And it reminded me of the disciples that Jesus sent out on their mission. Sometimes the course we're on is suddenly interrupted. Health, mobility issues cause change. Habits strand us on a sandbar. Social and economic barriers may mean change. But it doesn't mean the journey ends. So I want to, to read to you a paraphrase of a poem by Portia Nelson. She uses the illustration of a street, and in keeping with the theme, I've changed it to a river. But her poem is entitled, An Autobiography in Five Short Chapters, There's a Hole in My Sidewalk. Chapter one. There's a canoe, I, I, sorry, chapter one. I canoe down the river. There's a waterfall in the river. I fall into the river. I'm lost. I'm hopeless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Chapter 2. 
I canoe down the same river. There's a waterfall in the river. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place, but it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Chapter 3. I canoe down the same river. There's a waterfall in the river. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit, but my eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. And I get out immediately. Chapter 4. I canoe down the same river. There's a waterfall in the river. I portage around it. Chapter 5. I canoe down another river. <laughs> However and wherever it is that we travel, whenever it is that we get stuck, we know that the Spirit of God is traveling with us to help guide us around barriers, to give us new direction, and to keep us flowing towards work that we can do. Our spiritual journeys last through all the days of our lives, through all the bends in our rivers. Jesus tells us that God writes our names in heaven for our continued focus on Jesus' ministry and message of peace that we carry in our actions, our daily living, and our hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I'm sure most of you folks are aware that St. Andrews is an affirming church. And what you may not be aware of is that this new council has dedicated itself to renewing that affirming status um, by including a growing and awareness piece in every worship, worship service, just an opportunity for us to reflect on what being affirming means and just to refresh our commitment. And I just want to say that um, Brenda and I did not collude here. I had no real idea what the what the, the message, the total message that Brenda was going to offer in her uh, reflection this morning. But I don't know. Ooh, ooh, um, <laughs> And you'll hear what I what I mean in a moment. We speak often of being inclusive and affirming as a journey of awareness. And last week, uh, St. Andrews celebrated Pride Sunday, and two of our reflectors described their journeys, both acknowledging the challenges and the work involved. Each of us is in a different place on our journey, and the work is harder for some than for others. And so this morning, I'd like to offer us a blessing for our journey, and it can be for any journey, and it's adapted from the writing of Jan Richardson, who I just love. If you've never experienced her, please just Go to the Google, and uh, she's just an amazing um, poet and a multimedia artist. And so I'd like to offer you, offer us, this blessing called, I Know How Far. I know how far you will travel to offer what is needed. The lengths you will go to, to stand with those you hold dear. I know how every step you take begins with a lump in your throat, a tremble in the hollow of your chest, a pounding in the chambers of your heart, how you measure your steps in the rhythm of your pulse, how you find your way across terrain no map could ever show. Though distance, though barrier, though current, though expanse of time would keep you from propelling yourself forward, you see the place where your heart needs to go. But for a moment, for one small space of time, could you pause? And in the quiet, wait for the gifts that have been gathered around you, the treasures of wisdom born by those who have been traveling to welcome you since the moment you saw it. Thank you, Liz. We'll not now move into our time of sharing, and there is printed for you there the words for the Apatow music, which we'll sing as the offering is brought forward.
please join me in a prayer of dedication. With these gifts and our living, we ask to stay true to the past you guide us on, committed to the actions and mercies which reflect your heart and hopes for all of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now invite my ten children for the prayers of the people. All right, let us pray. God, whose special care is blessing all creation. God, of cloudscapes and raindrops and riverbeds. God, of cities and streets and houses. God, who rustles in our ears like a summer breeze in the tops of trees. God, who chimes in the distance like a pentatonic tinkling dispersing blessings all around. God, who lights the underbellies of birds with the burnt orange of the rising sun. We turn to you, God, like weather bangs in the wind. We drone and drum our thanksgiving like cicadas serenading the midday heat. We buzz with grateful confusion in the fields of blessings you bestow. And we cry for your help. Hear our siren cries dopplering through the intersections of our lives. Do not ignore our groaning, gasping, wailing, do not turn away from our pleading, moaning, imploring. Help us, God. Hold us. Heal us. God of the aging, God of the sick, God of the dying, may your special care and your strength and your comfort be with all those this day in need and all those we now say aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Turn us, O oh God, to face into our difficulties. Give us the pluck to meet whatever is before us. Breathe into us the resilience of our rejoicing ancestors. All this we pray mindfully. In the name of Jesus the Christ, know the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Sit down on my tiptoes. <laughs> Our next hymn, our last hymn for this morning is More Voices, number 163, River Running in You and Me. More Voices, number 163. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
это. Please, uh, please join me in the ascending forth. Holy Spirit, as we leave this space, surround us with your peace and love, your guidance and provision, as we take healing and hope to those we encounter on our journey down the river. We ask in God's holy name. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.